The first stage. The soul depraved, El Nafzul Amara. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Adam, of the seven planets to the moon, the ruler of the first sphere, or Falak, of the seven texts to praise to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, of the seven days to the first day, of the seven tesserads to Abu Jid. Notes. It may be said at the outset that the seven stages are all severally identified with these hebdomads. Possibly one could find the reasons for all these identifications elaborated somewhere in Sufi books, but such a science does not appear to be part of the regular knowledge of the practicing Sufi. The two sheikhs, Ahmad and Nasimi, did not appear to have any strong convictions on the subject and showed a disposition to invent reasons on the spur of the moment. Some of their ideas are reproduced in this account, but with this precaution. The old cosmology of the seven planetary spheres or heavens which, as cosmology, underlay all ancient thought, and as astrology affected, apparently, most mystic thought, is prominent here too. Until, however, the connection of Sufism with astrological ideas is studied, it will be impossible to define the precise significance of this hebdomad of the spheres as one of the correlations of the sevenfold way. Ibn Khaldun emphatically and expressly asserts the repugnance of Sufism and astrology proper. The two sheikhs, Ahmad and Nasimi, seemed to have no formed ideas on the subject. Note on the seven texts, Mathani, the seven clauses into which the Fatiha is divided. And a note on the Tesserads, a word made up of the first four of the 7 by 4 which is 28 letters of the old Arabic alphabet, combined with the four vocal signs. See Appendix 1. This stage is the first of the law. As its name informs us, it has to do with the natural, sensual, unruly soul, with man in his unregenerate state in this world, subject to the law, still ignorant of the way, of the knowledge, and of the reality. This is the state of all men, including ordinary Muslims. Therefore it is related to Adam, for he was the father of all men, and because he first disobeyed Allah. So too it is related to the sentence in the Fatiha, which says, Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Also to the moon, the lowest of the spheres, the nearest to the earth, the sun of the earth. No reason to think that we have here a lucky hit at the modern theory of the budding off of the moon from the molten earth. Sun of, in the east, only means specially related to. Each stage has, moreover, a special dicker, that is to say, the word used during that stage in those repeated ejaculations which form the most important part of the dervish's spiritual exercises, and which, as has already been said, are the food of the refining fire of the soul. The dhikr proper to this first stage is the fundamental witness of Islam, there is no God but Allah. This word, moreover, controls the theological teaching proper to the two stages of the law, one and two, we shall see how seriously the wording of this shahada becomes modified for the more advanced stages. But while the soul is still fleshly, unregenerate, depraved, it is not fit to transcend the traditional wording with its implied separation between the self, the world, and Allah. He is taught, therefore, that the words mean 1. There is no agent save Allah 2. There is no Adorand save Allah, and 3. There is no existent save Allah. Before passing from this stage, the novice must repeat this dhikr from 100,000 to 300,000 times, according as the Sheikh directs. Between each hundred times, he must also repeat the Azima, a prayer which runs as follows. Ilahi Azir Alaya Zahiri 
bi sultani la ilaha illa la wa hakik batini bi hakaiki la ilaha illa la wa hafsni minal balaya wal amrad bi haki la ilaha illa la my god show to me my outward self by the authority of there is no god save allah and certify my inward self of the truths of there is no God save Allah, and keep me from troubles and sicknesses by the truth of there is no God save Allah. Such are the means by which the first part of the regenerative process of the soul is compassed, and its passage through the first ten thousand veils secured. From the ethical point of view, this regenerative process is conceived as, successively, the cutting away of a luxuriant tree of evil qualities, the extirpating of its evil roots, the planting of a new root, and the growing of a new tree of virtues, with branches as luxuriant as the former one. This fourfold process is not completed till the seventh and last stage, and the contribution made to it by each stage is fixed and definite. In this first stage, then, the tree of the unregenerate soul depraved is represented as complete and flourishing from root to outermost twig. Its two roots are lust and anger. These join into the single trunk of ignorance with its constituents misbelief, doubt, inorthodoxy, polytheism and formalism or taklid. Then this trunk branches into the several vices of the soul depraved. The central one, continuing the trunk upwards, is envy, on each side of which are the two extremes, whereby the golden mean is missed, excess, ifrat, and defect, tafrit. Then on each side come the ramified vices. Thus we have the trunk continued, excess, envy, and defect. From excess comes worldliness, with greed, covetousness, and stinginess, and hypocrisy, lying, and treachery. And from defect the ramifications, pride, contempt, and dishonouring, and enmity, striking, vengefulness, hatred, and murder. The clearance of these outward ramifications of evil is the work of the discipline of this first stage, el tacliatu el carigia. The second stage. The soul accusatory, el nafsul lawama. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Idris, of the seven planets to Mercury, the ruler of the second sphere, of the seven texts to the merciful Raman, of the seven days to the second day, of the seven tesserads to Hawuzi. Note, Idris, Kathirul Daz, there is much studying, or Daz, in this stage, and of the planet, for Mercury is of a mixed nature, like the soul in this stage, with the unfavourable aspect predominating. The dhikr for this stage is simply Allah. Before leaving this degree for the next, the aspirant must repeat this 87,084 times, and between each hundred times the following azimas. 1. La mojuda siwaka wa inaka mojudun hakiki there is none other than thou existent, and verily thou art an existent that is real. 2. Ilahi ijal kalba abdikal daifi mazaran lid atika wa manban li ayatika, wa zukni bit habati haladikrikal ya Allah. My God, make the heart of thy feeble servant a place of manifestation for thy essence and a place of welling forth for thy signs, and grant me to be established in making mention of thee, O Allah. In this stage the aspirant weeps much, for it is the stage of the soul self-accusatory. 
its favorite vices are being cut away. The divine love passion, Ushk, is only just beginning. All, therefore, is perplexed, vexed, anguished. The discipline is so severe that the sheikh often sends the aspirant away for a time that the heart may have time to assimilate its discipline. For this discipline is now that of the inner clearance, el takliatul batinaya. The ramifications of outward vices have already gone, the trunk of ignorance is diminished, but the roots, anger and lust still remain, and it is against these inner vices of the heart that the discipline of this stage is directed. The third stage. The soul inspired, El Nafsul Mohama. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Noah, of the seven planets to Venus, of the seven texts to Lord of the Day of Doom, of the seven days to the third day, of the seven tesserads to Tayukil. Notes On Noah, for the former stages were like a flood of error and iniquity, and this stage is like the ark of rescue therefrom. And on Venus, because the influence of this star is also mixed, but good, or suud, predominates. The stages of the law are past. The two stages of the way are now entered upon. The dikha of this stage is hu, hey. The shahada is now changed from there is no God but Allah to the second person, there is no God but thou. The I stands face to face with the only not I, thou. And this the dikha teaches for Huwa, who, is written in Arabic with a circle. Thus does Allah encompass the soul round about. The extirpating process, takliya, is now over, and positive instruction in love and divine passion, mahaba and ushk, is given. The aspirant is now taught that forbidden musical instruments and singing are lawful, he recognizes that they can be used as a means to engender spiritual passion. Further, when he hears the sound of this music, it reminds him of the voice which, before the world was, asked the question, Am I not thy Lord? At that time the prophets both saw the light and heard the voice. The saints heard the voice only. The hypocrites neither saw nor heard, but understood the question. The misbelievers neither heard, saw, nor understood. But in this stage the soul regains that sight, the faith of seeing, Iman Maurawi, as opposed to the faith of deductive proof, Iman Istidlali. The fourth stage, the soul tranquil, El Nafsul Mutmaina. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Abraham, of the seven planets to the sun, of the seven texts, thee we worship and of thee we ask for aid, of the seven days to the fourth day, of the seven tesserads to Manusi. Note, the Sufis believe that Abraham underwent the discipline of the forty days when the idolaters occupied the holy Kaaba at Mecca and by that discipline's merit overcame them. Thus he obtained the soul tranquil. And note on the sun, for now the light comes out full for the first time. In the course of this middle stage, the 35,000 dark veils are left behind. In this stage, the past is finally forgotten. The last vestiges of anger and lust with ignorance disappear, and the first vestiges of patience and temperance, sabr and ifa, the twin roots of the new tree of virtue with the stem of knowledge, marifa, appear. True virtue thus begins to live, hence the dikha for this stage is hai, living one. For all these reasons the soul now becomes tranquil, the struggle is past, 
Everything it sees now leads it to Allah and is not accompanied by any pain of distracted longing. The dervish exercises of self-flagellation and the like are sometimes begun in this stage. They are the ordeals, barahin, of the saint life. If the dikha, hay, living one, is operative in the aspirant, no harm will come when the viper bites. The sword does not hurt when it pierces him. The fire does not burn when it touches him. These are the three ordeals. Before he touches the fire, for example, the aspirant says, Yana kuni badan wal salama, fire be thou cold and peace. And lo, its heat touches him not. The fifth stage, the soul God satisfied, el nafsul radia. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Moses, of the seven planets to Mars, the ruler of the fifth sphere, of the seven texts to lead us in the straight path, of the seven days to the fifth day, of the seven tesserads to Fasukir. With this stage begins the third of the fourfold division of the stages, knowledge, marifa. With reason, therefore, is it related to Moses, for he had true gnosis. He heard the voice. He saw the Shekinah, light. With equal reason is it related to the text, lead us in the straight sirat, path or bridge, for with this stage begins the true bridge to perfection. All that went before was only an external bridge, but now begins the secret of Sufism. Now the aspirant begins to know the wiles of the law and the secret machinations of the way. He alul sharia wa dasa isul tarika. Now he begins, by the command of the sheikh, to abandon a part, perhaps a fourth part, of the stated prayers and facts of the Sunnis. Nay, the command of the sheikh is not necessary. The dhikr itself discloses to him, kashf, the same secret. For the dhikr of this stage is kayum, self-subsistent. He has entered upon gnosis, knowledge, which embraces this and the following stages. The twin roots of patience and temperance with the stem of knowledge continue to grow during this makam. This stage is that of the soul God satisfied, indicating a position more stable and positive than the preceding one, the soul tranquil. In the days of this stage, the soul sings to itself, saying, Ho, soul, thou soul tranquil, return unto thy Lord, God satisfied, God satisfying. Then enter among my servants and enter into my paradise. Ya aya tu hal nafsul mutama'ina. E ja'ai ila rabiki radiatan madia, fadkuli fi ibadi, wadkuli janati. Quran, Surah 89.27. These words, it will be noticed, link the former, the present, and the succeeding stages together. The sixth stage The soul God satisfying. El Nafsul Madia. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Isa el Masi, Jesus Christ, of the seven planets to Jupiter, of the seven texts to the path of the objects of thy grace, of the seven days to the day of assembly, Friday, of the seven tesserads, Shatuthik. This is a higher stage than the last, inasmuch as it is better to realize that one is the object of Allah's satisfaction than that one is satisfied oneself. And with this realization, the aspirant knows that he is now free totally to abandon all religious observances, whether Sunni prayer or Sufi dhikr. He has no further need of them. Some, however, keep on some of these practices. If he uses the dhikr, the name commemorated in it is Latif, kind. The twin root of patience and temperance is perfected in this stage with the stem of knowledge. 
All is, therefore, ready for the ramification into the full-branched tree of the final stage. The seventh stage. The soul clarified, perfect. El Nafsul Safiya Wal Kamila. This stage is related of the seven prophets to Muhammad, of the seven planets to Saturn, of the seven texts to not of the objects of thy hate, nor of them who are astray, of the seven days to Saturday, of the seven tesserads to Daduzig. The name appropriate to the dhikr of this stage is el kaha the subduer by constraint. For kindness, lutf, see preceding makam, is for life, but constraint is for life's end. With this stage is reached the reality, the last of the fourfold steps. The aspirant has now attained. He relinquishes all prayer, all fasting, all religious observance whatsoever, for he sees himself as the mirror in which all things are reflected. The confession, there is no God save thou, which superseded there is no God save Allah, and has held good since the third makam, now gives place to its final transformation. There is no God save I. La ilaha illa ana. For the soul becomes the mirror, the measure of all things. The permitted and prohibited, halal wa haram, are now superseded and lost, because there is now no such thing for the soul as external prohibition or permission. All springs of action are from within. If he any longer prays, it is not as a duty enjoined by Allah. Prayer and no prayer are one. If he does what is prohibited to others, it is not sin to him. For all things are one, all things are related to his soul and reflected in its mirror. At the same time, those who attain this stage do tend, according to their temperaments, either towards the old asceticism, sud, or the newfound freedom and ease, raha. The keynote of the action of these latter is freedom of spirit, unlimited by any legalist consideration whatsoever but naturally self-limited by what makes for happiness. This is plain when the ramifications of the tree of perfection are considered, every branch of which corresponds to one that was formerly destroyed. The roots, patience and temperance lead, we have seen, to the stem knowledge, from which spring goodwill, rida, moral equilibrium, itidal, and the ramifications of that are unworldliness, tak el dunya, contentment, liberality, and so on, sincerity, ikhlas, friendliness, and so on, humility, tawadu, respect, reverence, and so on, and love, mahaba, gentleness, forgiveness, and so on. The keynote is, in fact, this moral poise, itidal, the golden mean, just as the keynote of the soul depraved was excess, whether towards too much or too little, if rat wa tafrit. The Sufi must not give too much prominence to any one of these virtues, for that would be to trench on some other one. He does naturally what makes for his own happiness, and that of whomsoever he is dealing with. It is for this reason that murder, for example, has no place among his actions, though he is the mirror of all things, not because it is haram or a sin, but because it contributes to the happiness of no one. He does not abstain from murder because of any external prohibition. Thou shalt do no murder. Similarly in the case of adultery, for the Sufi the legal has no longer any place at all. Therefore there is to him no such thing as marriage, for marriage is legal and an innovation, bida, nor equally any such thing as adultery. Both are transcended. The sexual act is in itself good. His relation to it is governed entirely by his own happiness and that of his partner in the act. The very name adultery becomes entirely unmeaning. 
when the great Sufi, the Sheikh Junaid al-Baghdadi, was asked, Does the man of Gnosis commit adultery? He replied, Wakana amrula madrak makduna. The affair, or the command of Allah, stands a determined determination. In the same way, the man of Gnosis does not steal, for how does stealing bring happiness to the man stolen from? And so for all the actions of life, no outward law regulates the Sufi in regard to them, whether the one way or the other, only the golden mean and the general happiness. In the mirror of his soul all things in heaven and earth are reflected. All things are in him and he in all things. There is no God but he. Appendix 1 The Seven Tesserads The Arabic alphabet today does not show the original order of the letters, an order which the Arabs took over from the other Semitic peoples, and which underlies, moreover, the order of our own alphabet, which came to us via the Romans, via the Hellenes, via the... What that order is can be seen by the non-Semitist, if he turns to the divisions of the 119th Psalm, which, being an acrostic psalm, is divided according to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. These letters, however, number 22 only. The Arabs retained this order for their first 22 letters and strung their remaining six on at the end, making 28. This number, itself made up of two mystic numbers, seven by four, was of course too good a chance to be lost by the Arab mystic. Seven seemed naturally to him to point to the planetary spheres, and four equally, of course, to the four elements. By writing A, B, G, D, and then ranging the remaining letters underneath in fours, he obtained seven words or tesserads, each composed of four letters severally proper to the four elements, and each attributed to one of the seven planetary spheres. Thus, of the four letters, the first is of fire, the second of air, the third of water, and the fourth of earth. el Moon, A, B, G, D. Uterid, Mercury, H, W, Z, H. Zuhra, Venus, T, Y, K, L. El Shams, the Sun, M, N, S, apostrophe. Mirik, Mars, F, S, Q, R. El Mushtari, Jupiter, S, H, T, T H K H Zuhal Saturn D H D Z G H The words composed of the above tesserads of consonants were sounded by means of the three vowels A U I plus the absence of vowel sign, which in Arabic is ranged with the vowels owing to the equal part it plays with them in syntax. Thus were obtained Abu Gid Hawuzi, etc. The passage cited from Ibn Khaldun shows us that mystical use was certainly made of these Kabbalistic words, the science of Semia or mystic names. We may suppose that they typified to them the fullness of things, Kamal, Pleroma, all the spheres, all the elements, all the consonants and all the vowels entering into their composition, a convincing orgy of sevens and fours, the numbers of heavenly and earthly perfection.